Hey, hi, Glenn here at the workshop at the gardens, and I'm out in the log yard here, and I have a couple wonderful specimens uh, of white oak and a large ash log, and I have a red oak over there that I'm going to be showing you how I seal the log. All right, first things first, let's talk about why we seal logs. So when a tree is standing upright and there's no decay, there's nothing going on on the inside of it, it's just a solid log, the only part of the tree that's alive is this thin layer around the outside. And the bark kind of keeps all of the moisture of the tree and that's what keeps it from decaying. The bark keeps all of that moisture in. So when you cut uh, the tree, moisture starts to get released out the end of this. A lot of times you can think of it as a straw. There's not much that goes out the side, but the ends can flow out uh, rapidly. So as this dries and this is wet, you create tension in the fibers and it slowly starts to pull itself apart. I grabbed this older piece of ash from the firewood pile and you can see in these little lines here. When this was cut, obviously I didn't see all firewood, but when this was cut, it started drying and we get these little cracks in here. That's called checking um, and that will eventually work its way through the wood and make it less desirable. So sealing up these logs will minimize, not prevent 100%, but minimize that checking, minimize that cracking. A big thing to keep in mind in the long term, what are you using the wood for? So when I'm pretty sure these white oak logs are going to end up being tables. So heading towards furniture, most likely we want as few cracks in them as possible. So that's why we're sealing them up. This log, actually these two logs I've already done, and you can see there's, maybe you can't, maybe you can, there is a little bit of a film on here, um, and it's waxy. Okay, let's talk just a little bit about what we should use to seal a, a log. This really does come down to scale of operation. Uh, a couple different things are available. The simplest is just some latex paint that you have in your basement. If you're doing one log in your backyard and you just want to get something on there right away to protect it, by all means, latex paint works just fine. Uh, I've heard, and I haven't done any research because I know I won't do it, but there's an Elmer's glue and some hocus pocus that you can put together and make it. The simplest of all methods is to use anchor seal. This is developed exactly for this. It's a paraffin, it has wax in it, it's water soluble, it's what you should use to seal your logs. End of story. Now it's not cheap, but the reality is what do you mean cheap? Because it becomes in value. How much is one board foot of perfectly dried white oak worth? And you're cutting three inch slabs. If you do the math, do a little bit of math, you're going to find that this stuff is very inexpensive to save wood. So in saving wood, let's talk there for a minute. If we don't seal, that crack's going to go in and we could end up losing six to eight inches up to a foot off the end of this. So you take a foot of lumber that you're throwing away with this checking, you may only lose an inch or two when we seal it. So it's kind of a no-brainer to be sealing. It's a no-brainer to be using anchor seal. This is where the scale of operation comes in. If you're doing one, two, three, four logs a year, get a quart, maybe get a gallon. If you're going to be doing a few more logs, um, get the five gallon pail. It's $125 right now at the time of filming, so around $25 a gallon. Latex paint really isn't that much less expensive. Um, so anchor seal is what you want to do. I get a five gallon pail at a time and then we just refill up these cans to work out in here. As I mentioned, it is water soluble. So luckily here in Minnesota, it's November. We're above freezing for a couple more days. We're in uh, the low 40s. So that's why I'm trying to get these couple of logs all sealed up before winter gets here. Um, a couple different methods of applying the anchor seal. The easiest is to grab your can and a paintbrush and paint away. That's when you have that one log, you're coming in, you just cut it, you just brought it in, one log, paint it on there real quick. The second method is to do some type of sprayer. 
Now, I know there's some operations around here that they buy it in 55-gallon drums and they have a power sprayer. They're just doing a few more logs than that. If you're doing a handful of logs, the absolute best way to apply is a the smaller roller, not a big, huge paint roller. This is the micro roller um, in there in a little tray, and it gets enough in there and it doesn't get too goopy. As I mentioned, water soluble, these both clean up, so I use this. This is not the first time I'm going to be using this one. So it washes up, soap and water, really easy, reusable. <laughs> so the next big question to answer is when do you seal a log? Ideally, as soon as that tree is cut down, you're sealing it up. Because as soon as that tree is cut and this grain is exposed, it's starting to lose moisture. So the reality of the situation is you're not going to be there every single time the tree is cut down with your can of anchor seal to get it sealed. So they're going to make their way back to your log yard, make it to your backyard, wherever. Now you need to get things ready to seal. We need to put fresh cuts on the logs. So these oak logs, you can kind of see these little teeny cracks from the logs the other day. I did a little bit of a cut. Here's what I cut off. And you can start to see the checking, the cracking that was on there. I only cut an inch off the oaks. That's all I needed. And you get to the other side. Now this has been off already two days and you're starting to see the little checks. If we go back and look at the two logs that I anchor sealed, there's no checks in there at all. There's no teeny micro cracks in there. And that's just what you start to see. So soon as you uh, cut a tree down, anchor seal it, or you're, it's best to put a fresh cut on and they say within an hour, but as soon as you cut it, start anchor sealing. So I'm going to take an inch off of each end of this white oak log. This particular ash log, I'm actually going to take more off. Um, this little bit of root flare here isn't going to work its way into a table. I believe I'm going to make tables out of the, this log is 12 feet long. So I'm going to take about six to eight inches off here, maybe make an end table out of the cookie and then take a couple inches off the other side. different thicknesses off on this big white oak. I knew from cutting the other ones that the cracks hadn't gone down so far. So I tried to take as thin a possible piece off. So that was about under an inch. And we'll take our best hand brush ever. And we'll just wipe it down, brush it off. That little internal crack, that's part of it. So that's not, we're not gonna worry about that. But this one's good to seal. Let's take a look at this big ash. Now on the other end, I only took an inch off. That's all I needed. <laughs> this monster piece right here, we're gonna turn that into a big end table or something. Of course, I have no idea who's gonna move it or how it's gonna get moved in a house. Anyways, a couple little internal cracks. That's not the end of it, but down to a really nice log here. We're gonna get this one sealed up. Um, still over 11 feet on that big log and this one is still at about eight feet so we've got some nice nice pieces to work with once they get milled okay time to start putting the sealer on let's get that set up all right with them all brushed off it's time to get a little bit of the anchor seal into our tray And you can see it pours out just like any other paint. Difference is you don't want to try to get a roller. Just dip it in there and get it all gooped in there. And what I found is if you put a little on and then pull it up, you don't drip quite as much.
I don't know if I'd call it it's soaking in, but it will go in a little bit. And just cover all of it nice and heavy. And this is why you want to use a roller of some type. If you were here with a little paintbrush, even a big paintbrush, this would take a lot longer. It might turn into like a 20 minute video. I don't have any of those. So thankfully I'm using the big roller, gooping it in there. Woo! And sometimes you can get a little too excited. And we're just working it into every saw mark, everything. We want to coat it heavy. Now, if you use anchor seal or another method, leave me a comment what you like to do, how you like to do it down below. That would be appreciated. It's an awesome community here where we all learn from each other. And with our temperatures right now in the, the mid 40s, dropping down to the 30s at night, this is probably gonna take two days to really dry. Next chance of uh, precipitation is two days from now, so we'll be just fine. And we're not gonna freeze overnight, so excellent timing to be getting this done. And I know what you're thinking. Isn't it freaking amazing that there's an ash log this big with absolutely no decay or rot? It's a pretty fantastic log, which is why we're going to the effort to make sure it gets sealed up. And it doesn't hurt to really get in there, check all of, all of those saw marks, and get it nice and sealed. All right, on to the oak. You'll notice that it goes on white and the other logs over there, which I did a couple days ago, are clear, so it does dry clear. And any of you wood turners out there, you will know what this is because you'll seal all your small pieces. I am going to seal the top of this cookie. Um, this will be the top of the table, I believe. Kind of cool to have the sides once we peel it. Um, but this is going to get sealed and hopefully we minimize some of the cracking on the top here. Now another thing that I like to do when we are sealing, it's just like painting fresh drywall or putting primer on fresh drywall. There's some of the ends that's gonna soak a little bit in and you might get some of those little pinholes. So it doesn't hurt to, you don't have to goop it on quite as heavy, but just to come back, and you can already see how it dries a little bit in the sun, the color changes. But just to make sure that every single little hole is filled in, and this refills the second little hit, will make sure that all those little pinholes get filled. And those pinholes are a lot more noticeable on the oak versus the ash and then you can again see how 
nice it is to have the roller to go across it fast versus a brush. And again, not worried about getting every drop out of the cans because we'll be refilling them with our five gallon pail uh, back in the workshop. All right, a little recap on what we did here. Uh, we sealed up the ends of our logs that we'll be milling shortly. And even if it's not shortly, if these are gonna sit for a while, that's why you wanna get them uh, sealed up. Even if you're milling them right away, you wanna seal the ends just to help that the logs and lumber dry evenly. Okay, when's the best time to uh, seal? Right after you cut the tree down, right after it's cut. If not, make sure you put that fresh cut on there like we did. Do it in little steps. We dick an inch and that's all we needed to on these. That's a big, huge stump that I'm gonna turn into an end table someday. Uh, that's why that got cut a little bit bigger. Uh, how to apply. The best is just using a small little uh, roller like that right there. The best product to use is Anchor Seal, readily available, easy to find, and it's water soluble, which means you can wash all that up, reuse it again. I would advise, especially if you're not the one doing the laundry, uh, don't get it on your clothes because it doesn't come out all that easy. It is wax after all. All right, and then apply an even coat, heavy coat, and then come back and do a second coat on top of it, roll it, make sure you fill in all of those pinholes. This is dramatically going to help the quality of your wood. And if you're going to the effort to salvage the wood, bring it in, mill the wood, why not take that teeny little extra step and seal up your logs properly? All right, that's it. I've been Glenn uh, at the workshop at the garden. Here in the log yard. This has been Life in the Log Yard. Thanks so much for watching the video. If it's your first video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell. You'll be notified the next time we do a video here in the log yard or in the workshop or landscaper know how fun stuff like that. If you've watched a previous video and you're coming back, thank you so much for uh, following along on the journey and support. All right, that's going to be it for today. Take care. Enjoy.